And we are back on a Corrupted Pulse Show. I am your host, Jay Sizemore. And uh, fair warning, I think it's going to be a very long show. Uh, I'm long overdue. Um, I just want to make a quick announcement. Um, before I get into the show, this is Independence Day. I'm recording this on Independence Day at 1 o'clock in the, in the afternoon. And... Um, once again, I am unemployed. Um, June 29th was my mother's, what would have been my mother's 81st birthday. And let's just say um, I wasn't feeling it. I, I felt really bad, depressed. I didn't want to be alive. I really missed her so much. And on that same day, I come into work and... Uh, I come into work and realize that the boss set me up to fail and then I quit his dumbass. I was either make him proud or make my dead mother proud, so I chose accordingly. And that's what happened. And there'll be more on that subject to come um, because there's going to be some serious legal proceedings regarding that situation. Um, it, is a, it is affecting, it's going to affect a lot of people's lives. And, but unfortunately, it's going to take months, months and months, possibly maybe a year and a half up to that before things get rolling. So even though I have an opportunity to do gonzo journalism regarding that situation, you have to understand that the process, the legal process has to play out before uh, the journalistic process. And not only that... Um, I don't want to do this story, even when I get even when I get around to the journalistic process of that story. I don't want to do it alone, even though it even though it fits to Gonzo Media, and it fits with the scope of Gonzo journalism. I don't want to do it alone. I don't want to make the story alone. I don't want to. Uh, I, I I want to. I want to bring in a partner. I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out and see if uh, I can uh, collaborate to bring this story to light, because. I, I, as I said, I don't want to do this alone. This is something that um, I feel the need needs to be broken. This is a story that even though it affects me personally and it does fit Gonzo journalism, it's a story that needs to be broken. Independent, some, it, it has to be broken by somebody else. Uh, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to try to reach out and partner with. Uh, uh, with a group to uh, make that happen in the coming months. Uh, well, basically until uh, the legal avenues are exhausted. With all that said, <laughs> it's time to get on with a goddamn show. And this tweet says it all. The worst thing about the Reagan administration is that it never ended. And we got this picture. <laughs> oh, you talk about deep fakes, man. You got Biden and Reagan all mixed into one. <laughs> there you go. Hey, yep, yeah, there you go. Uh, basically, the, the brunt of this episode is going to be the fallout of the Democrats and the... Uh, Supreme Court decision to end uh, to overturn Roe v. Wade and effectively, basically, and safe abortions. And and I've, I've you've heard me say this a billion times, and other uh, other other channels say this: the Supreme Court decision does not, in any way, shape, or form, ban abortion. Um, what it does is give states the rationale. It gives independent states the power to ban safe abortions. Okay? Safe abortions. Rich cunt with millions of dollars in her back pocket will always find a fucking goddamn doctor to perform her abortion. Poor people, on the other hand, it's back to the back alleys with the fucking coat hangers. That's it. That's the best and most succinct way I can put it to you. 
even at the risk of having you pissed off at the verbiage I'm using and clicking elsewhere and leaving the show. Tough shit. Let the door hit you on the ass on the way out. Other places probably won't be this brutal and this freaking honest. I will. I'll tell it. I'll tell it like it is, no matter what. Um, and this is another ridiculous tweet from Frank the Socialist saying that Jimmy Dore has more in common with Donald Trump than he does with Bernie Sanders. I responded that uh, Joe Biden still owes Jimmy Dore and the rest of us $200. Trump doesn't. And Bernie Sanders is blaming Manchin and Cinema for it. Not himself. Not his failed revolution. We have Joe Biden today because Bernie Sanders refused an independent run. Sheepdogging party loyalist. Uh, Gritty has a good one here. This is a really good one. Uh, this is a little screen grab of uh, ABC New York, Channel 7. Video, tenant fatally shoves landlord downstairs in dispute over rent, and Gritty just says nothing of value was lost. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's great. Um, and then we have this from uh, Socialist MMA. This is Nick Cruz of uh, RBN. Uh, in response to uh, this NBC, M MSNBC video, progressives who still vote Democrat are literally voting for the Reaganite party. <laughs> it's true, and here we go. I will even play this video from the Washington Free Beacon. This embassy, oh my goodness, my nose is killing me. This uh, M MSNBC guest, there's a great deal of Americans where it is uncomfortable that they're spending more, but they're not going to go under. You got to stop complaining. You have your jab. So I'm going to need you to calm down and back off. This is fucking ridiculous. You got to hear this. You know, I'm just going to say this and, 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 and hold up here. I'm showing an issue where that uh, audio is not playing. Let me fix that and come back. Well, that didn't take long. A few seconds. Um, I I don't know if you noticed, but if you noticed that I have a goldenrod theme up here, uh, I have upgraded to the latest uh, preview release of Windows 11 on my system. So I'm running a I'm running a beta software. So kind of bear with me here. Um, but anyway, let's replay this video from the top now that I got the audio fixed. Where we are right now. You know, t I, I'm, I'm just going to say this, and, and, and if I get banged for it, I don't care. There are There is a great deal of Americans where it is uncomfortable that they're spending more, but they are not going to go under. You know, you, you got to stop complaining when there's so many people who literally the inflation rate means they may only have two meals instead of three. There are Americans who did extremely well in the last two years in the market. You still have your job. And yeah, it's costing you more for gas, but guess what? You're still going to take that holiday, that 4th of July vacation. You can still eat out. So I'm going to need you to calm down and back off because it feeds into this fear. And then this fear feeds into people making decisions that creates the very thing that they they're fearful of. Where we? She's full of shit. And I hate that. I say this as a person that recently had to walk away from a job, a fast food job, where even the price of gas determined whether they had to cut labor or not and send me home early. And she's going around saying, you're still going to eat out. You're still going to take that vacation. Not people on food stamps, motherfucker. Not people going through the drive-thrus. This is this is tone deaf. Absolutely goddamn tone deaf. And Nick Cruz is right. Progressives who still vote Democrat are literally voting for a Reaganite party. Um here's something I retweeted from Bernice. It's weird to blame Bernie for Roe versus Wade being overturned instead of Barack Obama, who actually had the power to codify it, but instead used his majorities in Congress to pass Mitt Romney's health care plan, made the Bush tax cuts permanent, and bailed out his Wall Street donors. That's right on. No lie there. Uh, again, Nick Cruz says, this is what happens when y'all tiptoe and try to reform a system built by slave masters. He's right. 
Um, I had it buried. Barack Obama pissed me off when he said this in response to the Supreme Court overturning Roe versus Wade. He comes right out at 1030 in, in the morning on uh, June 24th and says, uh, today the Supreme Court not only ver- reversed nearly 50 years of president, it relegated the most intensely personal decision someone can make to the whims of politicians and ideologues, attacking the essential freedoms of millions of Americans. I was having nothing of it. You let this happen. You and your sorry, loathsome shower of Reaganites that masquerade as Democrats for those 50 years. Not to be outdone, Michelle Obama comes out with this sprawling screed and says, My thoughts on the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe versus Wade. Uh, comes out with a freaking poem, with a screed. Brianna Joy Gray wasn't having any of it. Okay, but why didn't your husband codify Roe? God fucking damn. It's like you need fireworks to shoot out the phrase, what, it, what the fuck's wrong with you dumb fucks in the middle of the sky tonight? Provided you still have fireworks you can set off legally, that is. God damn. And I, I, Nick Cruz again. Man, the legacy of Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, Nancy Pelosi, and Chuck Schumer will always be allowing Roe versus Wade to fall. You got that right. And don't forget right here, Thea Ballerina. Don't forget RBG. Ruder Beth Ginsburg. Don't doesn't mean she gets a free pass. That damn straight. And you know what's sad? You know what's infuriatingly sad? Is the Democratic Party got more out of Ruth Bader Ginsburg's dead corpse in come in the terms of fundraising than she ever provided them while she was alive as a judge. And they will cop to that fact. And then, oh, oh my God, back up. Because it's that embarrassing. It's that craven. Speaking of craven, once again, Nick Cruz says this is beyond purity. And this, is com- this comes from Farnoosh Amiri, who says, as protesters can be heard in the back chanting outside SCOTUS, House Democrats are singing God Bless America as if they're the 700 Club. Because, well, pretty much... They are the 700 Club and now. Right-wingers have completely right-wing apostate Republicans, Bible-based motherfuckers have permeated this party to the point where it's just a freaking fully-owned subsidiary now of corporate interests. And now it shows. Here you go. Jesus, goddamn Christ. It's all performance. It's all theater. Jimmy Dore uh, retweeted this from Nate Lerner. And this is ridiculous. Let's just zoom in on this. If you're upset about Roe versus Wade, the solution is very simple. Help Democrats win. If Dems control Congress, they will pass legislation codify Roe versus Wade, which never fucking happened at any time they ever in the past 50 years controlled Congress. This is this this is hope. This is hopey changey. This is fantasy land. This is this is tattoo the midget screaming, they plane, boss, they plane, they plane. <laughs> There's nothing fucking goddamn tangible in this man's argument. Which will block red states from banning abortion. If Republicans win, they will pass a national law banning abortion. The fuck they won't. They can only do that when Republic. Uh, the only way women, the only way Republicans can pass a national banning abortions is if House Wigger Democrats let it happen, and that's what they're doing. They're gonna let these goddamn Dem- Republicans happen on purpose and bellyache, bellyache. Oh, we're so fucking. We're the martyr. We're the victim, and we're the martyr, and and they and they're gonna cash the fucking check. 
you're going to cash the goddamn check. Fundraising check, that is. And Jimmy Dore was having none of it. Is this a real tweet? And I say, sure, the fuck wasn't sarcasm. <sighs> Gritty, in response to Barack Obama. Is this you, my dude? And it links to a BuzzFeed article where Obama promised to sign the Freedom of Choice Act on day one and didn't touch the fucking thing. And here's the video. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're at a crossroads right now in America, and we have to move this country forward. This election is not just about playing defense, it's also about playing offense. There will always be people, many of goodwill, who do not... The Let me fast forward to this right to here. ...sure access to abortion, but to make sure that the uh, judicial nominees that you will inevitably be able to pick are true to the core tenets of Roe v. Wade. Well, the first thing I do as president is, is sign the Freedom of Choice Act. Kaboom. Fucking right there. First thing I do is President signed the Freedom of Choice Act. And then we have this. The Freedom of Choice Act is not my highest legislative priority. The Freedom of Choice Act is not my highest legislative priority. Hocked pond and house wiggered. How does it goddamn feel, ladies? How does it fucking feel? Before you answer that, continue watching. Because you're going to hate me for what... You're going to hate the messenger for what I reveal next. <sighs> and you, you you shouldn't. You should be... hate. You should walk right in the fucking nearest mirror and hate your goddamn selves. It's ridiculous. Uh, Jimmy Dore responds to Joe Biden who said, Roe versus Wade is the law of land and we must fight any and all attempts to overturn it. As president, I will codify Roe into law and ensure this choice remains between a woman and her doctor. And he said this on October 5th, 2019. They say uh, Jimmy was having none of it. They say they hate Trump because he's a con man, but they love this guy. Biden and the Democrats could have codified Roe uh, abortion rights, but choose not to because they have nothing else to run on, run on except fear and Trump hate. Plus, it's grift. It's money. It's fundraising. When God kills Satan, the party's over, folks. The party's fucking over. The grift is done. You can't have, you can't have a, th you need the threat to fundraise. And when you can manufacture right-wing threats to abortion, boy, you can grift like fuck. Gritty once again with this little cartoon parroting the Democratic National Party here. Women's protective freedom is being threatened. Vote harder. Blame Susan Sarandon. Stop using as a fundraising issue and actually do something protect, to protect reproductive freedom. They throw his ass out of plate glass window. <laughs> Boy, and here you go again. There's another one. <laughs> If you elect Democrats, we'll protect women's... <laughs> ah! Great shit. Great shit. Voting is critical. <laughs> yeah, my ass. And without, without missing a beat, the Democrats say Republicans want to pass a national ban, abortion ban. Democrats want to codify Roe. That choice is on the ballot in November. Bull fucking shit. That choice is on the ballot, but they got Manchin and Cinema in the Senate Parliamentarian on villain rotation. That's all you fucking need to know right there. Cabral comes out with this. In case you're wondering, Nancy Pelosi is still supporting the only anti-abortion House Democrat. Pelosi, whose party is trying to galvanize workers to go to the polls over abortion rights, is still backing Texas Democrat Henry Quellar. What the fuck? Black and Empire. The reason I make it clear that I'm not a leftist or on the right and I just stick to my values is so that I don't have to waste time trying to explain why I don't give a shit about whether you agree with my thoughts 
to stay in either club. And Comrade Risty said this right here. I'm done with your stupid teams because it doesn't really matter. People will label you whatever is convenient for their con preconceived idea of what you are, regardless of where you actually fucking stand. Piss on, fuck both of your goddamn clubs. Amen to that. She's right. Uh, and then she says, uh, case in point, get fucked. Hillary Clinton, I could compromise on abortion if it included acceptance for mother's health. This bitch wants fucking goddamn poor people to keep feeding the goddamn capitalist system. Right here. That's what she wants. That's what Hillary Clinton wants. And then Mueller, she's like, to third party and non-voters in 2016 that wanted to send a message. Is this the message you wanted to send? Bull fucking shit. And that's why Missy told that person to get fucked. Max says, probably the fastest rightward shift in my life, and it's happening while Democrats control the House, Senate, and Presidency. Right, right on, brother. Right on. Uh, and once again, Brianna Joy Gray. What do we do when abortion rights are under attack? Stand up and fight back. But will anyone withhold their labor? Will organizers ask that of folks? Will they ask them to, to strictly block traffic? Should they? She's genuinely curious, you know? Oh, did you see that shit? Hold on, let me back this bitch up. They conveniently got gates in front of the goddamn Supreme Court. Yeah, you wouldn't want to guillotine a couple judges now, would we? Assholes. If you, uh, holding Biden accountable says if you're upset that the recent Supreme Court rulings are are wondering how we got here, Google Joey Joe Bi Google Joe Biden and, and Anita Hill. I was a kid when this was going on. This was what 83, 84. I was ten years old. I remember these hearings like like yesterday. And it's sad because I'm pushing 50 now. Google any of this set says any of this shit says gritty. And right here in 86, he voted for Scalia. Joe Biden voted to confirm Antonin Scalia on the Supreme Court. In 91, uh, botched the Anita Hill hearing, gave up Thomas, laid Romat for Kavanaugh. I said 80. Wow, that was 91. I thought it was in the 80s when it happened. Wow. <laughs> Uh, 92, argued no noms on delegate an election year. Repubs, Republicans used for Neil Gorsh. 93, during uh, RGB nomination, stated presidents should nominate judges from opposing parties at the same, uh, sometimes. Biden, right here, women don't have the sole right to say what should happen to their bodies. And he said that in 74, the year I was born. One year, and Roe versus Wade happened in January the previous year. So our Roe versus Wade is 49 years old and I'm 48. Fucking ridiculous. Fucking embarrassing. Remarkable how the GOP manages to get their work done while Dems are somehow always completely powerless to do theirs. Right on, man. Right on. And Gritty nails out the abortion shit. Can't fundraise when there's no threat. And that's what the Democrats did. They manufacture right-wing threats to fucking goddamn bullshit and bank on those threats to happen and then fundraise. Fundraise, fundraise, fundraise. It's all about the fucking ducats. Big-ass fucking grifters. Speaking of which, let me bring up the Tagonzo Media's Facebook page because I said something along that fact. Uh, let me go here to Tagonzo Media and pull up this post right here. Uh, first off, this is Julian Assange's birthday, and I want to announce Tagonzo Media stands with Julian. We always did. But right here, I want to bring this to you. In the stupid sweepstakes today, showers of fool-ass women throw their money at bald-faced ex-Republican male grifters in the DNC who enjoyed sentencing Ghislaine Max Maxwell to 20 years for sex trafficking underage females to nobody. And it's the picture right here. 
Democrats pull in 80 million. They fundraise. They made 80 million dollars off of off of the Supreme Court overturning Roe versus Wade, and then milking it, grifting it. 80 million fucking dollars. That's half. No, was it? Well, maybe it was. Uh, never mind. Sometimes I get my damn millions and billions fucking in, uh, mixed up. It was it was 40 billion that went to. Uh, fighting that goddamn war. You know, in the Ukraine. Here, they pull in 80 freaking million. Imagine, here, here, let's look at this real, sick, real quick here. $80 million. They grifted off of a convenient Republican threat to abortion that they manufactured by campaigning and financing Republicans and picking them, pro-life Republicans, and picking them as their running mates. 80 fucking million. How many diapers is that? Three diapers for poor people. How, how many, how, how much is a, uh, how much is a single payer health care again? What about our bridges? Imagine $80 million going to the EEOC. Imagine what they could do with that budget. Oh, no, we can't let that happen, right? No, again, Grady's right. You can't friend raise when there's no threat. Um, speaking of Grady, here's the shot and here's the chaser, folks. This is from Robert Reich. You know who Robert Reich is. Little short guy. Man, shit lib motherfucker. He comes out and says, Liz Cheney for president? And tr tries to per perpetuate this idea. And here's what he says right here. It's, it's, in, it's in, you know, plain text here. Listen to this. I trust Joe Biden's steadiness and judgment. And if he runs again, I'll probably back him in 2024. But today, I want to suggest someone who isn't even a Democrat. Oh, fucking shit. And whose position on many issues I, and I suspect you, strongly disagree with. But who could possibly be the best president of the United States for the perilous times we're entering? <laughs> I'm referring to Liz Cheney. That's the shot, folks, according to Gritty. And here's the chaser, folks. Here's the chaser. I have always been strongly pro-life. Today's ruling by the Supreme Court returns power to the states and the people of the states to address the issue of abortion under state law. We're going to put that bitch in the White House. You're out of your fucking mind. Jesus H. Nancy Pelosi once again being clueless because of Trump. Here's what she says, and she said this. Look at this date, June 24, 2022, 11:50, one hour, about one after, one hour after the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade. What does she say? Because of Trump, Mitch McConnell, and the Republican-controlled Supreme Court, American women today have less freedom than their mothers. No, it's because of your sorry ass. You and your Democrats control Congress, Senate, and the White House, and you sat on your ass. She goes on to say the hypocrisy is raging. The harm is endless. Democrats cannot let this assault stand. Bullshit. You did let this assault stand. You sat on your ass and did nothing. We will organize and vote to restore your rights. No, you fucking wrote because you never fucking did. Michaela nails it. Remember when Hillary Clinton picked an anti-abortion running mate in 2016? Yeah, his name was Tim fucking Kane. Ryan Knight. Kneeling in Kenty cloth and reading poetry is how Democrats respond to injustice and inequality, folks. It's no wonder they always lose, even when they hold a majority. They are worse than useless, and they're taking up the space of where a real left party should be. 
And this is from the recount where she, uh, where they say House Speaker Nancy Pelosi reads a poem in reaction to SCOTUS overturning Roe v. Wade. I am personally overwhelmed by this decision. From time to time, I quote this poem by Ehud Manor. He's an Israeli poet. I met his wife when I've been in Israel. He says, I have no other country, even though my land is burning. Only a word in Hebrew penetrates my veins, my soul, with an aching body and with a hungry heart. Here is my home. I will not be silent, for my country has changed her face. My country has changed her face. I shall not give up on her. I shall remind her and sing into her ears until she opens. You know what? I'm going to stop this and just say the obvious. I got to say the obvious right now. Nancy Pelosi is no longer a Democrat. She hasn't been a Democrat for some time. If you listen to her verbiage and her language, she sounds like in she she sounds like a right wing Bible based seven hundred club fucking true believer. She is a right wing true believer who is simply cosplaying as a Democrat. And you know, I don't know about you, but if you're a woman who's getting a fucking gun. <laughs> If you're a woman who now has a goddamn, uh, is now getting the handcuffs attached to your uterus, do you think a poetry is going to solve the fucking problem? Seriously? A poem, mind you. Where do they get these goddamn idiots? Greedy again. Hillary Clinton supporters are still blaming everyone except the nominee who lost, who should have been the easiest election in presidential history. Right on. And she handpicked her opponent for fuck's sake. Uh, more Joe Biden. This fall, we must elect more senators and representatives who will codify a woman's right to choose in the federal law. Bullshit, you won't, because you never did. 50 fucking years. We need to elect more state leaders to protect the right at the local level. We need to restore the protections of Roe as the law of the land. You fucking fundraised, this off, fundraised off this shit. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Hold on. Let me show you this. Let me move here. Uh, Pramila Jayapal comes right out. I, I, I just don't understand the point of this goddamn tweet. A friendly reminder that five out of six conservative justices on the Supreme Court were appointed by presidents that lost the popular vote. And I said, what the fuck does this have to do with this bullshit? And Obama says abortion rights is not his top priority. Popular vote on the Supreme Court is meaningless. What the hell is she going on about? And she, this is the head of the progressives right here, folks. Who gives a rat's ass? Right here, Dr. Virgo comes out, or oh, she comes right out of the gate. Virgo criticism, folks. Watch it, folks. Ooh, it's going to be fucking brutal. Weren't you on stage giggling as your colleague booed our last nominee? Where's the giggles now? Ding! Watch it, man. Watch it when Burgos lay it on, boy. <laughs> nice. Absolutely. And here you go from uh, right-wing Latstetter. The Democrats. This is disgusting. Democrats had 50 years to codify Roe versus Wade. Right here. Roe versus Wade. January 23rd, 1973. I told you folks, it's 49, I'm 48. It's one year after, one year and a week after my freaking birthday, or before my birthday. Uh, Democratic presidents, uh, a Democrat president between, this is Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter was president, I remember this because I used to watch, I'm, I'm three years old in 77, okay? I am, in 1977, I am only three years old. I turn uh, four years old in January of 78. I'm watching freaking Tic-Tac-Toe with Wing Martindale. I'm watching goddamn game shows, dude. I'm watching Hollywood Squares on ABC. I'm watching freaking The Price is Right. Fuck, man. 1977 to 81. I remember this. Then we had a Democratic Party. Part of, we had a Democrat president, Bill Clinton, 93 through 2001. Then we had Barack Obama, 2008 to 2016. 
And then we have Biden, 2021 till now. Then we had Democrat House majorities between 73 and 94, 2007 to 2011, 2019 until now. Democrat Senate majorities, 1973 to 81, 87 through 95, 2007 through 20, 2015, and 2021 to president to right now, as we speak. Abortion codified never happened. That's it. That's the right there. They're full of shit. And you got clowns like John Ida Rolla who says, I'm once again asking the Democrats to fucking do something. And I just laugh at the fucking clown boat. You're only a okay, piece of shit. He really is, folks. Absolutely fucking goddamn serious, wretched, worthless, dramatic freaking performance artistry, man. You can't find a bigger goddamn con artist than John Idarola when it comes to the Democrats. I think he's worse at this point than Jane Uger. Um, I come out on January. Now, th this is a funny tweet. June 23rd, I said in response to Thea, who said, why are Democrats so committed to not giving a shit? And I like agreed. I was like, if not giving a shit was a crime, Democrats would be in Gitmo right now. The very next day when this Supreme Court case landed, I reiterated. Let me rephrase this. If not giving a shit about abortion was a crime, Democrats would hurl themselves into Gitmo just to escape the guillotines. Joe has this video of the clown himself, John Adarola. And uh, Uncle Fester's laugh track uh, pretty much uh, doing her best, absolute best Jimmy Dore impression. Check this shit out. They're, in, they're just, they're, they're, they don't care about you. Let's just be very clear. They don't care about you. They don't care, and not just you, John, all of us. They don't care about you. Adam Schiff doesn't care about you at all. The Democratic Party, the mainstream Democratic Party today gave us a massive middle finger, okay? I feel better. Someone made a joke, go ahead. I feel better when I see I feel those, better, right? gonna make you feel better? Yeah. They're gonna fuck you, but they're gonna put lube on while they do it. But Joe Biden's speech today was, man, this really sucks. You should really elect more of us so this doesn't happen. You guys are in charge. What are you talking about? Vote like your life depends on it, because it does. <laughs> because it does. <laughs> Nancy Pelosi sending out the fundraising emails immediately. What a gift. What a gift to the Democratic Party. Time to fundraise. What an awesome issue that we can campaign on. So the Democrats don't want to codify abortion. Why? So they can run on it. Fundraise on. Until people tell you to stop donating to them, they're just bullshitting you. And then do absolutely nothing about it. You are not fit to lead anything. You are not fit to fight. You couldn't fight your way out of a wet paper bag. Just come now. We're gonna... You know what? Let me add. Let me add to Anna Kasparian. Okay? Even though she blocked me. Let me add to this. She says Democrats couldn't fight their way out of a wet paper bag. And I say, no, sweetheart. These assholes couldn't pour piss out of a boot with directions on the goddamn heel. I have very way. And sometimes people get mad because they feel like I'm a little too harsh toward Democrats. I should focus more of my energy toward Republicans. Listen, guys, I tell you that Republicans, the Republican Party is trash every day. I don't know what more I can do. I don't criticize. Okay, then. You know, she's right. I have no fucking argument with her, even though she blocked my fucking ass because I exposed her. I, I, that was over the Jimmy Dore, you know, forced to vote, Ryan Grimm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that shit storm, she blocked me. Uh, but she's not wrong. She's right. Let me go back a bit. Let me go back a bit. And guys, I tell you that Republicans, the Republican Party is trash every day. They are trash every day. But the problem is when you got people like her, when you have people like Anna Kasparian and Jenk Uger and Crystal Ball and uh, Kyle Kalinske, when you got these shit libs, and I'm going to say it, when you got shit libs 
who are willing, willing to police right-wingers under some kind of cockamamie idea that somehow your content has to have a percentage or a quota of Republican bashing, guess what, lady? Guess what, folks? I hate to bring it to you, but if you're willing, if you're willing to demonstrate in your own content the ability to police right-wingers, that means you will police poor motherfuckers like me. You will police the left. And how? what's a better way to... Uh, uh, What's a better way to explain your ability to police the left than you coming out with your sanctimonious garbage saying vote blue no matter who? This is what vote blue no matter who gets you, Anna. I hate to be the freaking bearer of bad news, but you already agree. Vote blue no matter who got you here. How can vote blue no matter who gets you out? It can't. And the sad thing is, we've been saying it all along, and you blocked us for saying it. You blocked us. We were right. Jimmy Dore was fucking right. And finally, you're right. Now, the question we need to ask is, what the fuck are you going to do about it? Or better, uh, maybe a better question is, what can you fucking do about it? Are you going to come? Are you going to come down out of your ivory tower and? Pitch a bitch on the gun there. You know, when I was a kid, and she, I don't, uh, she's probably, uh, she's younger than I am. Again, I said I'm 48. I remember in the 70s, you had freaking feminists burning bras. Is she going to burn a bra? Is she going to burn, a, what's she going to burn? Do it, is, burn, is bra burning passe now? What do women have to do? And the only thing I can think of, the only thing I can think of for women to do to make abundantly clear is for them to drop out of labor force. Anna should quit. Anna should give freaking chink you your middle finger and walk. And stop producing. Stop, be, stop, ha just squat. Fucking quit the goddamn job. Stop working. Stop paying taxes. Cut the goddamn motherfucking goddamn purse. That's what it's going to take. I hate to I hate to say it, and I think if Anna if Anna uh, ever unblocks me to see this video and see this segment, she'll probably agree. Something has to be done, and this is how extreme you got to be. You have to stop re financially, financially, and through your votes, rewarding, enabling, shielding, and defending these rat bastards. That's the only thing they're going to listen to. It's the only thing that's going to work. Once again, it needs to be said, people tolerate more in a politician exactly which they would never put up with in a wife or a husband. It makes zero sense. Let me go back to that Anna Kasparian. What if her husband was like this? Would she divorce him? Would she kick him out of the gut and kick him to the curb? Probably. So why are we putting up with this in our leaders and our politicians? It makes no goddamn fucking sense. This, this, <laughs> before I, before I show what I said, let me show this little clip of Jimmy Dore. <laughs> this, this, this girl had the plot, folks. She had the plot and then blew it at the end. Uh, this has got to be seen to believed. Row was passed. Right. They've been saying they were going to do this, mm -hmm. and, and they did it. They did it, and they right. did it, and they're not stopping there. This is just the beginning. This is just the start. So I blame the Democrats. Unfortunately, I'm voting blue. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh! But uh, this is their fault. So Row was passed. Right. They've been saying right there. See uh, here, here you got this girl. She's right on the fucking money. I blame the Democrats. Uh, unfortunately, I'm voting for them. And Jimmy's like, oh, no. oh. Fortunately, I'm voting blue. Oh. Yeah, I'm voting blue. And I come right out of the gate, and I don't mince any words. That guy I dated in 
That guy I dated hit it and quit it. Unfortunately, I have to take him back. Jesus H. Where do they find these people? That's what vote blue no matter who means. Okay? That's what, that's what politicians do. Especially Democratic politici politicians. And I hate... I'm just going to come out and say it. A Democratic politician, they'll come up to you, you know, looking real good, got the nice shiny teeth and everything. Hello, baby. How you doing? How you doing? Let me hit it and quit it. Let me hit it and quit it. And you go like, why? And they're like, that dude's worse. And then you say, okay. And you don't, you don't think, hey, this asshole wants to hit it and quit it. No, you're like, okay, I'll let you hit it and quit it. And then uh, you let him hit it and quit it, and then you turn around and you can just sit there weep. You're weeping fucking a week or two months, uh, three months later, I can't believe that son of a bitch hit it and quit it. What the fuck's wrong with you? God damn, makes no sense. Gritty says, judging from their broken promises, Democrats clearly know what people need and want. Judging from their efforts, they don't give a shit. <sighs> Democrats, the Democrats said this. Republican leaders have called to ban abortion nationwide. This extreme ultra MAGA party must be stopped at the ballot box. Democratic Party leaders pick right-wing anti-abortionists as their running mates only to shame and blame voters for rejecting them at the polls. The DNC is a party of housewiggers who crave Republican approval and acceptance like, notice me, senpai? It's fucking pathetic. Sabby Sabs. 18 Democrats donated to Henry, Henry Cuellar's campaign. The same ones who are crying about Roe. Donated to an anti-choice politician. Let it sink in. This is fucking funny. This is a shit lib saying there has to be people who regret not voting for Hillary in 2016. Any of you willing to come forward and own your mistake? I come out and say, I'll smear myself blue and street walk up and down the interstate to Brodus Clay's old WWE entrance music at the earliest and most cost effective attorney. Better call your mama. <laughs> Better call your mama. Yep, you all remember that fucking theme. I got a link, but I'm not going to play it because of copy strike shit. Um, I didn't announce this, but this version, this episode of uh, A Corrupted Poet Show will be both on YouTube and on Odyssey. So that's why I'm going to, uh, I'm going to refrain for, uh, risking the copyright strikes. So, yeah. Uh, and here we got, uh, Nick Cruz again, ask a progressive why NATO exists after the fall of USSR and watch them turn into Sean Hannity in real time. <laughs> Oh, this is great. Gritty. <laughs> this is fucking great. What vehicle do you automatically assume is being driven by an asshole? Police car. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I seen this and I had coffee coming out the nose, man. <laughs> I have to stop sitting here drinking coffee when I'm on Twitter. Whew. Man, that was a good one. <sighs> Savage Joy Marie retweeted this and just says, Oh my fucking gods. And this is AOC and I'm just gonna play the damn thing and shut the fuck up. Hello everybody. Happy Friday. And I say happy because Joy too can be an act of resistance. Um, I want to talk about personal acts of reclamation because sometimes people will say there's nothing I can do, I can't do, I feel so powerless. And there is no act too small um, that you can engage in. And even today, I have a personal errand. Um, I need to redo my nails. And I've decided that I'm going to use my new manicure as almost like a personal act of reclamation for me and my story. Hello. Everybody. Are you fucking kidding me? AOC says she's getting her nails done as an act of resistance to the overturning of Roe versus Wade. 
Grifters are gonna grift, folks, right here. Congrats, AOC, for, for, for proving once again you ain't a leader, but much more suited as a parking meter. <sighs> Getting her fucking nails done. As an act of resistance. Are you fucking shitting me? And here's what she did. Notice something else. I want to show you guys. I don't know if you noticed this, but after she got her nails done, because I don't know if you noticed this, but when you're recording a selfie in real time, you don't get captions, okay? There's nobody, you can't, you can't put the captions in the video. You have to order them. You have to put them in in post-production. So that's what she did with your shiny new fucking nails. <laughs> Goddamn slacktivism. After the fact. She had shiny nails putting her goddamn, putting her own captions in her own video. And she thinks this is, she thinks this is great. She thinks women, women in her own district can't afford diapers is going to fucking help. This is, re this is resistance. What a fucking joke. <sighs> Rome. Rome talking about Sam Cedar. A white man that lives in a gentrified neighborhood lecturing blacks and people of color on what it means to be a leftist, using dog whistles, calling them dumb dumb. Doesn't like when people push on politicians and just doesn't care about the working class. And then he comes out and says, he concludes, he, 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 he uh, expands, he says, uh, him and Jake Uger and Kyle Kalinske is the reason the left is what it is today, weak. They became millionaires off of our off your suffering, and all they've done was make uh, more telling you to vote. They know if you move any further left, they won't have them luxuries they have today. Ding, ding, ding. He's right. Blue Moon comes in here and says, Sam Cedar lives in the hipster part of Brooklyn. Emma Viglin, too. Kyle Kalinske's Westchester. Jordan Cheriton is Massapequa. Humanist report is Portlandia. The pattern, they're all from affluent suburbs on the coast. They are all coastal elites, or they were, and now they're gentrifying Brooklyn. And let me show you some of the replies. This one is, you know, this is a pathetic defense of it. He says, it's possible to come from money and fight for the people. However, to do that, you have to betray your own class of people, likely populated by friends and family if you grew up rich. My favorite class tra tra trader is John Reed. That's true. She's right. Um, yeah, that wasn't too bad. That's a decent tweet. Uh, definitely possible that, but a blue moon goes on to say, it's definitely possible, but that would require them to have some self-awareness about the suburbs from where they hail. And yeah, uh, she's right. She's not talking about purity tests. She said self-awareness was in very short supply. Personally, I think it's really rare when a rich person or even an upper class, middle class person has a scintilla of insight. Rome goes on to say, all of these are white supremacists and I will treat them accordingly. Right here. Somebody has health insurance, am I right? <laughs> Probably has life insurance too. Right on, Rome. Um, there was, I remember tweeting in here something about this and weighing in. I don't see my response in here. Maybe I can dig it up in a later, in a moment here. Um, yeah, cause I retweeted it. Let me, let me go back in here and see if I can find it. Because I said something that got freaking loved. He got a lot of love. Let me see if I can turn it up. You know what I'll do? Fuck that. Um, I will pull it up momentarily. And hey, let me pull it up in another browser here. More. Oh, here. Let me right click and go to open the new tab in my freaking. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. Oh, yeah, here we go. Let me see. Because Jordan Jordan piped in. This Remember this tweet, okay? Uh, Blue Moon, all right? Right here. This is the tweet that got the love here. Six people fucking 
Thank you, folks. Um, this was in response to uh, Snack Panther says, "Why the hell does where? Uh, why the hell does where the left-leaning commentators live? As long as they're in good faith actors, who gives a damn?" I had to say because people like Jordan Cheriton aren't sticking their mics in the face of the poor, the jobless, and the homeless. Incidentally, it doesn't happen. Nobody, nobody is saying, "Hey, here, uh, uh, toothless fat fuck, let's get his uh, two cents on the issue." It's not happening. Not incidentally. The financier is making sure he sheepdogs them back into voting for the Dems because the financier demands a return on the investment. The financier is fundraising Jordan Charon, stick it, Jordan Charrington, sticking this goddamn microphone in people's face in his camera. But at the end of the day, he betrays them with his goddamn horrendous fucking takes. What tells you, it's telling you where his bread is buttered. His finance, he's doing the work of his financier. He don't care about the people he's covering. He's doing the work of his financiers. And that's, and, and that's a sad thing because, think about it. People are saying right here, Jordan has done so much to bring inflammation on Flint to all of us because the financier wanted to expose that. Okay? Simple as it gets. The financier wanted whoever the financiers are they wanted to explode expose the flint crisis so they financed it and jordan uh jordan made a return on the investment he fucking had them hammer that story out you can't take that away from him but it's also true the converse is also true he's throwing his goddamn camera and microphone and poor people and then turn around and assaulting them uh insulting their intelligence with his own goddamn takes on the issue trying to uh, sheepdog him back in the Democratic Party. He responds to Blue Moon by saying, I grew up in Massapequa on Long Island, a normal middle-class home in a town that's now right-wing. I haven't lived there in 15 years. I now spend most of my time traveling the U.S., reporting from poor eras demolished by capitalism. See what I... He, he, right there, he's making... He's arguing my case, for fuck's sake. He's arguing my own case. I now spend most of my time traveling. The dude spends his time in a car. Okay? He spends the majority of his time in a fucking vehicle. Either his own vehicle or a rented one. And he's financing. He's putting gas money in this bitch. And then he's using, he's using expensive gas money. Expensive gas to go to the poor areas demolished by capitalism. And then I say, and I respond, and telling them to vote for the same capitalist Democrats that made them poor and will keep them poor. All under the stupefying belief of harm reduction. All Republicans are worse. When the DNC is basically a fully owned subsidiary of the GOP at this point. It's ridiculous. And Chris Hedges. Happy birthday, Julian. We won't stop fighting for your release. May you go home to your family soon. And right on. He is right on the money. So I come out there and say, Tagonzo Media stands for press freedom. Tagonzo Media stands for Julian Assange. Happy birthday, my fellow journalist. The state's going to call him a terrorist. The state's going to call him every goddamn name in the book. That they would try to pin the Sharon Tate murders on Julian Assange as they could, but they can't, so this is the best they got. It's wretched. Now, here's oh, <laughs> Nick Cruz again. Capitalist fragility. This is from a meteorologist, Aaron Schaefer, in Minnesota. The real insanity, this is what, this is what he tweeted in response to a news story that he retweeted about Minnesotans face, Minnesotans face the insanity of gas at nearly $5 a gallon. And he responds to this tweet saying, the real insanity is people not changing their habits or buying smaller, more fuel efficient vehicles, despite soaring prices and, clim and the climate emergency. Nick Cruz comes out and says, if someone is struggling to pay for, for gas, how are they going to buy a new vehicle? Capitalists are dumb as rocks, I swear to God. Imagine your first reaction, instead of blaming the price gouging, uh, price gouging fuel companies, is to blame the consumer U.S. culture rotted people's brains. You know, and then the meteorologist blocks him. 
It's fucking stupid. Capitalist fragility, all right. He's right on the money. And lastly, I got to bring you to this story, and I'm going to show you this in real time. Because I didn't retweet any of the tweets that were devoted to it. Because, my God, there were so many of them. So I want to show you what's going on, if I can. We're going to type in the phrase abortion, Hillary Clinton, which I already previously did, and hit in return. And look at all the news results here. Women are going to die, Hillary Clinton, on Supreme Court's overturned Roe v. Wade. Women are going to die. White House faces pressure on abortion. Um, here's an opinion from the New York Times. Abortion on the ballot. Remember, you're not alone. You're alone in the voting booth. Um, the Washington Post. This is fucking funny. I'm gonna I'm gonna open this one. This is fucking funny. Moms, te- what moms texted their daughters after the Supreme Court ruling? Who fucking cares? You know what I mean? This is performative shit. And the worst of it all is the reason why Hillary Clinton was trending is because all the shit libs are now saying that we need Hillary Clinton to run as president again. And I don't have it retweeted. But it's been out there on Twitter. It's ridiculous. The notion. Let me see here. Let me do. Let me span. Let me reach. Let's go and search for Hillary Clinton in Twitter. And see if we can pull up some of these. um, Some of this shit. Because she was trending. And it's ridiculous as to why she was trending. So let me shrink this back down so we can maximize our screen real estate here. Um, right here, CNN. This is ridiculous. Under This is from Fluxus. Under what circumstance would you vote for Hillary for president of the United States in 2024? I'd rather have bamboo shoots stuck under my fingernails than ever vote for Hillary. And this is a link to CNN. I'm going to have this in the description so you can just laugh and point and laugh and giggle. This is the only link I'll probably have in the description, but this is, this says it all. The whispers of Hillary Clinton 2024 have started in the immediate aftermath of the Supreme court's monumental decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, conservative writer, John Ellis took the internet to make a provocative case. It was time for Hillary Clinton to make another political comeback. Are you fucking kidding me? The electorate has, how many times does the electorate have to reject Hillary Clinton in order for it to freaking sink in? We don't want her, but look at this. This is from the Hill. This is ridiculous. Now more than ever, Democrats need Hillary Clinton. Why? So see if we can reject you reject her again. And is this from this is from Douglas Schoen. This is a, an opinion contrib- a contributor. And he says earlier this year I co-authored a piece for the Wall Street Journal that argued that a perfect storm in the Democratic Party is making a once unfathomable scenario a comeback for Hillary Clinton in 2024, highly plausible. What, what the fuck? There is not enough, there isn't enough cheap in the world for Tommy Chong to smoke to get this goddamn stoned to believe that this woman can ever be become president. The electorate repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly rejects Hillary Clinton. And it's like they lost the plot. They keep on pumping the, uh, catapulting the propaganda. And Gritty fucking nails it. Gritty fucking says it. Democrats are so committed to losing the next election, they're talking about bringing back Hillary Clinton. And that's the sorry state of affairs we are in at this day and age. And I told you it was going to be a long show. It was going to be about an hour. And uh, yeah, ridiculous. This is the best we got, folks. Um, more on the oh, let me let me go back, let me transition back to this to show you my uh, I um, I 
in the previous episode, I showed you some um, um, analytics regarding uh, me taking a corrupted pull show off YouTube and um, putting it on Odyssey. So let me show you those uh, analytics right now. Let me go to first, let me go to Odyssey. No, we don't want to go to a 4th of July. Shut up. Um, Odyssey. And we'll pull up those analytics first. Creator analytics. I've got two followers now and 32 views. Only two views this week, okay? Now, and that's, I got 11. The, my, my biggest video was two months ago Hillary, uh, uh, with Susan Sarandon. Now, let me show you all the fucking uploads I've got here. Raising awareness, milking the outreach, and clicking payout. That's my latest before this one. And I only, that was 17, I put that up there two weeks ago. 17 days ago. Only two views. Three views for tracking the house wiggers, scare politics. See, I'm consistently getting less and less views on, on the Odyssey. Now let's go to YouTube. And I'll show you the exact same analytics from the exact same video uh, that I uploaded there. Your videos, we're going to go there. Now, raising awareness, milking the outrage, and cashing the check. I get nine views, four likes, one comment. Let's go ahead and check that out real quick here. Oh, shit. Um, right here. View on YouTube. And we can show the comment, I believe. Where the hell is the comment? What happened, YouTube? What, what, what is this? Why do I not? Where, where are my comments? Right here. Newest first. Notice that? This is another way I'm getting censored. Citizen Smith said, thanks for much for saying that. I'm sick of being told what needs to be done with very few people leading the way, if any. Can we retire Bernie like an NBA jersey? Fuck him and, you know, shoot him in the rafters and be done with it. Okay? Now, in order to get that comment to show up, I had to sort it by newest first. If it's sorted by top comments, nothing. It's not there. And it makes me think I'm getting no fucking response whatsoever. I have to sort my own comments just to see them. And that's the only, I mean, it's the only comment on the video. But still, I shouldn't have to go through that. I shouldn't have to go through these links to see my own, uh, see my own feedback. Why is this happening? I don't understand. But that doesn't change the fact that I've gotten more views out of that one video than I did on Odyssey. Even my 32nd stinger saying Odyssey gets corrupted. That's at 20 views and that's at 20 views now. And it's only a 30 second stinger. My welcome to the Gonzo Media 13. Progressives insist on censorship. 24 views. So Again, I want to belabor the point. I did this to prove a point, and that is all the progressives on, uh, on YouTube who are bemoaning their censorship and whatnot and piss and moan and whine and cry literally cannot afford to, bring, to stop being on YouTube. They literally can't. And I have proven that by this little experiment here, showing how badly I even suffered by doing so. How badly would Jimmy Dore, uh, how, how badly would Jimmy Dore and Kit Cabello and RBN suffer if they walk away from YouTube in protest of, the, of their policies and their community standards and, and, and everything they've done? You be the judge of that, seriously. And with that, I want to announce my return 
to YouTube. The experiment is over. A Corrupted Kids Show and Tagonzo Media will be on, from this day forward, on Odyssey and YouTube going forward. And that is the show today. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, Tagonzo, we stand with Julian, and you should too. Happy birthday, buddy. Thanks again.